China's new Silk Road initiative runs through the multi-ethnic region of Xinjiang. For 2,000 years, trade along the route has brought people from different ethnic groups closer. And such connections in turn help to further improve economic ties between China and its western neighbors. Well, in today's installment of Silk Road Journey Xinjiang, CCTV's Han Pong travels to a border town called Tachang to see how people are dealing with ethnic differences both at home and in the workplace. Mrs. Bu Aliam's family probably celebrate more festivals than anywhere else in the world. She herself is a Uyghur, but she married an ethnically dour man. Hey, hey, hey. And several of their children are also involved in inter-ethnic marriages. Her family now consists of six ethnicities, including Han, Kazakh, Hui, and Russian. And each of their own festivals is also a big day for others. For them, their differences seem more like a blessing than a burden, if they can be managed well. <laughs> we have four celebrations each year for the new year alone, according to our respective traditions, which brings happiness to all of us. When we get together, we never say things like, you are Uyghur and I'm a Han. That helps for nothing. As they sit down at the same dinner table, their customs can't be more different. Each has their own preference in clothing and cuisine, and more importantly, their own god to pray to before they eat. Uyghur, Hui, and Kazakhs pray to Allah, although slightly differently, and Russians to Jesus Christ. There are also followers of Buddhism, shamanism, and non-believers too. What their own god says to them can be very different if not opposed from time to time. The family's host says religious conflict under the same roof is the last thing they want. When we pray, we are very careful that we pray in private or in our own churches and mosques so as not to offend others. And when we are together, we respect different religious customs, such as avoiding contentious words and the food of pork in front of Muslims. The key to religious harmony is a deep-rooted respect for each other in every single detail of life. And Aliam's family is nothing special in a city. Across Tacheng, multi-ethnic families account for well over a third. That mixture is also found in the workplace. Tacheng is on the Chinese-Kazakh border. Here in the city's border trading center, ethnic Kazakh Nazi Chilizada owns a small shop. She learns Mandarin Chinese by herself for the sake of business and hires people regardless of their ethnicity. We have employees of ethically Uyghur, Kazakh, Mongols, Hui, and so on. All we look into is the ability to work, plus the tolerance toward other groups. We all think that without ethnic unity, nothing can be achieved. The small town of Tacheng is hugely ambitious. Under President Xi Jinping's initiative to build the Silk Road economic belt, the once remote border town now finds itself in the center stage in a vital connection between China and Kazakhstan. Most importantly, years of its ethnic unity and harmony help guarantee a stable market. For most people who haven't been to Xinjiang, terrorism and religious extremism are perhaps some of the first words that come into mind. But Xinjiang is a vast region with huge differences from one place to another. Here in Tacheng, over 20 ethnic groups are living in peace. Many people say that ethnic unity in Xinjiang cities, like this one, is the first precondition to make the Silk Road economic belt possible. For Mrs. Bu Aliam's family, they say they may not directly take part in building the grand project, but they will be a contributor nevertheless because their tolerance and open-mindedness can help defend the close ethnic relations through every single detail in life. Han Peng, CCTV, Tacheng, Xinjiang.